<laughs> Alton Peak. Now, the continuation. Hello everybody, this is Double RPG here, and welcome to another episode of Double RPG Let's Play with Golden Sun on the Game Boy Advance. In today's episode, we are going to resume where we left off, but we are not going to finish up Alton Peak. Or, we're not going to finish up the town of Alton like I had originally planned. I had no idea how much longer this place was going to take after looking at the footage I recorded. But, anyway, let's go ahead and get on with this episode that's already in progress. And, as I promised, we will take care of the other living statue, but not the boss of the living statues. And we will be able to save the town of Alton, well, almost completely, but everything else will be... Um, all the flood water will have vanished and we can explore around the town. So that way we can go and obtain some newer weapons, and we can go around and check the houses for all the crates and jars and barrels and boxes for any special items that we can find within them, or any just healing items or coins, whatever. Like, when we always when we go into a town, we'll always find coins, but, you know, maybe something really good, like a, you know, a really powerful weapon, or maybe a good piece of armor, or maybe even a, you know, an item that will help increase our stats. But we'll just have to see. So, uh, how's everybody doing today? Hope you all are enjoying your Friday, and thank God it's Friday for those of you who have school, right? <laughs> yeah. And it's almost the weekend, and my day is coming along very nicely, too. Except, uh, we got some snow here yesterday. No, actually, Wednesday night, we got some snow. I was very shocked and surprised that we got some of that stuff to land in our you know, to land in our yard, and I think this is the first time where we had a little blizzard come in through my place, or come in through the area that I live at, and, you know, it, it wasn't as big as, you know, say, like, what Colorado or what the Northeast gets in terms of snowstorms, but, you know, it was nice to see some snow hit the ground, even though it's kind of chilly out there, about 21 degrees right now, but, you know, it was good to see some snow for once. But, uh, if it starts to get into a big old blizzard again, then I am mean, gonna have to, uh, scrape up my neighbor's, uh, what do you call it? Their driveway, a couple of them, so that way, you know, I can get some cash out of it. Oh, and, uh, I actually got a chance to play the, uh, the Final Fantasy XIII 2 demo that appeared on the PlayStation Network. And I have to say, out of every, you know, from what I played out of that game, and from Final Fantasy XIII... I was still not impressed with Final Fantasy XIII 2. I mean, sure, it... I mean, I will admit that the battles have been fixed to where it, things can be a bit easier, but it still kind of has that same difficulty from the previous game, but it's a little bit, I guess you could say, a little bit toned down in terms of the difficulty, but for the most part, it's still pretty challenging. But the thing that I don't get is, is, you know, when you're playing a Final Fantasy game or a JRPG... JRPG in general, why is it so hard to try and go back to basics? Basically, what I'm trying to say is, why is it so hard to go back using a world map to travel around and go into many towns and, you know, many dungeons when you're playing a JRPG and a Final Fantasy game in general? Isn't that what Final Fantasy games are supposed to be about, just like with traditional JRPGs, is that you travel on a world map and go into towns and buy items and equipment and that kind of stuff? But no, you don't do that with Final Fantasy XIII or Final Fantasy XIII 2. It pretty much ends, ends up becoming the same as, you know, Final Fantasy X in a sense. But even Final Fantasy X had some towns you could go in, excluding a world map. But yeah, like I said, there's at least towns you can go in. But in Final Fantasy XIII and XIII 2, no! That's the thing that I'm not liking about those games is, you know, why can they not go back to basics? And, you know, why do they always have to go by the tropes of what mi what many of the other past Final Fantasy characters have already experienced. Why can I why can they not do something that's a little bit more darker? Kind of like what Tetsuya Nomura is going to try out with Final Fantasy versus 13. Jeez, Louise. And you know, I when when I was doing the podcast, you know, when I was doing the 4DS podcast and I was doing another podcast after the 4DS podcast, you know, and well, let me rephrase myself. When I was doing the 4DS podcast back this past weekend, along with another podcast, my, uh, my special guest, 16-Bit Jeff, he actually made a pretty good point about JRPGs, where they are going nowadays, as to where the tropes in Japanese society has kind of been over-redundant. And 
I can desperate I can definitely see the trend where many Japanese gamers are actually getting pretty tired of that stuff and they wish for things to change and for you know for games to evolve than you know sticking to the traditional tropes what where, where they have been most of the time you know it's like with uh, Japanese anime style games most of the stuff that they have is either lighthearted or stories about friendship that kind of stuff I mean that's fine and all but at least try to make the you know at least try to make the tone of the story a bit dark or something I want to see you know a really dark story come out of the Final Fantasy games or most of the JRPGs in general I want to see a change within the genre I mean there are other you know there are some people who try to save the gaming industry to where they can actually do something different like Keiji Inafune, Tetsuya Nomura, Hideki Kamiya, Shinji Mikami, uh, Shigeru Miyamoto, even Masahiro Sakurai. Those types of people, and Hironobu Sakaguchi as well, and even Atsushi Inaba, they all realize that, you know, the way that most games from Japan are going, and since the decline of the Japanese, uh, of the gaming industry in Japan, it's no wonder why many people in the Japanese are starting to you know, stray away from most others because it's like we're a gen it's like they're a generation behind in terms of game uh, game development. I'm, and it doesn't mean that the West is you know is is completely safe from that logic, but no, the West has seen its you know has seen its big flaws too. I mean, just take a look at the amount of first-person shooters and uh, you know action games we've been seeing, and even those ones where you know the the character is so much of a, I guess you could say, quote-unquote, badass, to where, you know, that they don't even need any development to where, where it'll actually make you uh, like the characters a whole lot. That's what I like about games, is, you know, some games, you know, when taking a look at them now, instead of back during the old days, is that, you know, sometimes character development is sort of a process that you need to go by in order to you know, really like a character. I mean, in order... Well, not necessarily like like a character, but just like the game in general. I mean, we're at a point where we're, we evolve from the limitations to where there are more possibilities to where you can actually, you know, make things a bit more enjoyable. I think that's the approach that we are coming in games, is that they have... You know, some of the games that I have seen that people actually like, they tend to have a bit more of a cinematic experience. Kind of like uh, Metal Gear Solid 4 and Heavy Rain and some of those others that, you know, look very astounding. Even Xenoblade Chronicles. So, yeah. You know, what? Uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is, with the next generation of gaming coming up, I hope that both the first party and third party and second, uh, second party developers actually come to a truce or come to a more close relationship to where they can actually, you know, make a lot more profound IPs and, you know, and better games in a series in general, because I think that's the thing that I've been kind of seeing these days, well, I think all of us has been seeing most these days, is sequels, and sequels can become a really redundant thing, because I know that people like it when, you know, there are well-established IPs and they want to see more entries, but there's got to be a point where there are you know, some newer games got to have some time to shine as well. I mean, being skeptical about newer franchises when, you know, when the ones that are more popular that gets completely overshadowed, or, you know, completely overshadows the others, it's kind of a sad thing. I mean, especially with some of those that are underrated. But uh, I can't really think of any of the newer games that are kind of underrated that, you know, that... Been, that have been completely overshadowed to, you know, try to deserve a time in the limelight than most of the other games that are out there. I think Merle Moss of the Demon Blade was one, and I think Ark Rise Fantasia was another one, even though that game tends to be more of a, you know, of, of one that has really bad, uh, or has a really bad English dub, but, you know, it had a lot of potential to be, you know, a really great single game itself. So yeah, I guess that was my little rant right there. Uh, you know, when I was, uh, you know, when I was talking to 16-bit Jeff about, you know, where RPGs are going these days, because since we have seen a resurgence 
of JRPGs because of the strong and significant impact that Xenoblade Chronicles, The Last Story, and Pandora's Tower had in Japan, I think it's, you know, come to a point where, you know, the Fran- or the, uh, I guess you could say the genre needs to be innovated again. I mean, not just, you know, the RPG genre in both the, uh, in both Japan and the West, but, like, games in general. And I know that Nintendo wants to have Retro Studios actually work on a Zelda game for once. And that's saying a lot right there. So, yeah. And, you know, and when you think about it, too, with people complaining about uh, Ninja Theory doing the Devil May Cry reboot, it is kind of... Ugh, I don't... I don't mean to sound biased or anything, but I think that the the criticisms that the game has been getting has been kind of over-redundant, and it should be let down. And I know there are purists in the franchise that are really pissed off about, you know, the, you know, the direction of where Dante's, you know, uh, character design is going, but at least give Ninja Theory a try. I mean, at least, you know, since Capcom hasn't really been the best at what they've been doing recently, you gotta at least give them credit for letting Western developers try out their own IPs you know, their own IPs to where they could actually try to become really good games in the future. And I think, you know, Del the Devil May Cry reboot may actually be pretty good. Okay, enough of that. And since we went through that cave, we finally made it up to the third living statue and everything has been saved within the town. Well, necessarily not saved, but, you know, all the water has been drained and we can go ahead and check around the houses and the buildings and stuff for any rare items that we could have missed out on, as well as upgrading our equipment. Yeah, we can upgrade some equipment, all right. Let's see, let's give that blessed, uh, you know what? Let's give the Synergy Rod to Ivan, since he's still pretty weak on attacks, or strength. Okay, so we're done with that. Actually, we want to check around this place first. Okay, we got nine coins. Nine coins? Oh, come on! There should be at least something inside of a barrel or a jar or a box or a... You know, or something that would have... Or a crate that would have something better than nine coins. Well, I guess nine coins is better than nothing, so... Might as well take it. Okay. Let's go ahead and check out this one, too. All right. And why didn't we not check up, you know, check on our, uh, defensive armor? Maybe it's because we're not really doing well on money right away that we want to be sure that we collect some more before we get some better armor or something. But anyways. Yeah, as you can tell, by going inside the buildings, they look pretty busted because of the, because of the flood water. But at least it will rebuild itself from the damages that the living statues have done. Now, that third living statue wasn't the last one. We will be going to take care of the main one, but we won't do that until the next episode. And speaking of which, since we made a lot of progress today, I think this is possibly a good spot to where we can go ahead and we can wrap up things. So, anyway, gamers, next time on Double RPG Let's Play with Golden Sun on the Game Boy Advance, we're going to resume where we left off, and we're finally going to finish up Alton Peak, like I had originally planned, even though we didn't do it today, but at least we will finish it up in the next episode. Anyway, gamers, if you have not done so already, be sure to follow me on Facebook and Twitter with the links in the description. And if you like what you saw, then be sure to rate this video, subscribe to my channel, and leave comments below to let me know what you guys thought of this episode. Anyway, gamers, take care of yourselves, and I shall see you on the next episode. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys then.